Go. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the entire exhibit staff, let me say welcome. I'm the gallery manager, and this is the curator, and I will be discussing emergency preparedness today as part of this exhibition. This exhibition brings the form, brings form to hyper-specific feminist ecosystem. It's a way of understanding a non-linear, interconnected history of many movements. Now, my job as your guide to the invented uh, landscape you see above on this poster is to help you relate what you're learning through this ex exhibition to the hyper-specific communities that you inhabit or to our larger shared society. Now, you've had time to look around and read a bit about the history of this mud flat, the plants and animals that have lived here over the past 395 million years and how the landscape has changed as the water levels here have risen and Glaciers affected this area, but only about 5%, and natural evaporation and incredible deluges of rain have affected this landscape as well. But let's talk about the intense, uh, exciting, but uh, maybe scary event that flooding is first. Now, while it might be good to have a general understanding of where flooding happens in the U.S., uh, it's best to know where flooding happens in your local area. Um, what is your community like? Do your citizens, uh, what do citizens in your city, and better yet, in your neighborhood, uh, suffer from the most? Do they have health disparities? Do they have wage disparities? Do they have unequal gendered representation of part-time uninsured work? Or do they have um, full-time insured work with promotions available. If your block and the surrounding three blocks around you are on even one foot higher of ground, you and your neighbors will fare much better than your neighbors just beyond that level of elevation. So, the first thing is to know your local area. Some feminist theories and causes are more important than others. Focus on your local gender inequality issues in your neighborhoods. Second, there's an important distinction to be made. There's a flood watch and a flood warning. A flood watch means floods are likely. Experts you're watching, oh, experts are watching your area closely. They understand what gender issues are at play in your area, and your area might need to respond to those issues. Now, a flood warning, on the other hand, means it's already flooding in your area. You are late. The water might as well be at your door, and you are on borrowed time. Come clean, get in front of feminist issues, and get your family out of the house and to higher ground immediately. Now, if you know your local area really, really well, you'll be better prepared for this one. Remember the adage, turn around, don't drown. People frequently drown in even six inches of water because they don't underestimate the power of a flowing water stream. When you come across moving water and you don't know how deep it is, um, instead of fording the water cavalierly, instead turn around, don't drown. Choose higher, drier ground in the meantime, like this five gallon bucket that I'm standing on. What you don't know and what you can't ascertain can hurt you. Tell people around you that you aren't sure of your businesses, your churches, or your local government's practices on equality. Then go and research them. Ask your friends and connections to better understand your terrain and your footing before you get swept up in something that you should have turned around from earlier. Last and most importantly is one that you can start on today. You can build an emergency preparedness kit. That's what this is. Because in the end, you are the only one that you can trust. Now, I'm going to speak metaphorically, but these points also relate to actual disaster survival. So you're getting two lessons for the price of one. Now, 
let's talk about the inside of my emergency preparedness kit. Now, I'm going to sit on my bucket because my preparation supplies are too small to demonstrate to you all. They're not a very good teaching tool. But the curator here is going to show you images of what's in my bucket and what you can put in your emergency preparedness kit. Okay, so the first thing in the bucket is, ah, water. I store enough water in my kit to get an individual to more drinkable water elsewhere. But water is heavy and it takes up a lot of space, like books do. So I also have a life straw. Uh, a life straw means you can drink impure water where you find it. If I have access to some water, but I don't know if it's trustworthy, I'd better have strategies to filter the water that I find. So I have a life straw or a Rolodex, a collection of phone numbers for people who I trust to help me filter the impure water that I can find. I also have purification tablets. I might run into um, some impure water and I might be called to drop some knowledge. I need to have my facts straight and I need to be able to advocate for every part of my food web and I need a way to convey that purified information to my community. Last one, I have granola bars. Granola bars stay good a pretty long time, but eventually we need to replace them. Do we have to replace theory periodically? Why do we have to replace it periodically? <laughs> it goes bad. It breaks down and it doesn't stay good for our times. So, your job now is to map a hyper-specific environment that you live in. Um, do you have your water? Do you have your filter? Do you have your purification tablets? Feminist waves are exciting, but they can also be stressful if you don't know how to participate or if you don't already have a community in which you talk about this stuff with. Starting to build these practices now means you won't miss a step when things begin to change around you. Thank you.